This summer in Rio de Janeiro, a former GAC student athlete uh, was on the world's biggest stage as she uh, represented her nation of Senegal in the women's basketball tournament. Uh, and joining us here to talk about that experience, the former Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm, Umal Chama. Umal, thank you for joining us here. Um, when I first think about you think about uh, your Olympic experience, what's the first moment that come to mind? Thank you for having me. Um, the first one that comes to mind is probably pride. And... Uh, um, Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, but then just take us through the experience there of uh, being through the, the ceremonies there before the uh, the game started there. What was it like walking into a uh, Olympic Stadium? It was it was amazing. It was a, a great experience as we get got to see a lot of superstars and uh, a lot of big names in the world of sports. Um, former OKC Thunder Kevin Durant, I saw him, I got to take a picture with him, Serena Williams, Brittany Griner, all those people that I was, when I was in college, I was watching and admiring them. I got to be right there by their side and being in the same stadium and get to see a lot of different countries, lots and lots of different athletes and to feel and to know that you're part of something as amazing as the Olympics was something definitely unbelievable and soaked up every moment and I loved it. I enjoyed being there. It was, it was an honor. <laughs> And then how about uh, the game itself? You started off there right with uh, with Team USA and players like Brittany Griner and them. Uh, to be on the same floor as them, uh, what was that uh, that game like for you? It was huge. Um, we played it with great anticipation. As soon as we found out that we were in the same group as them, it was like, oh my gosh, we're going to get to play against the United States. And um, going up against Diana Tarazi, Maya Moore, and big names like that, it was something different to look forward to. And when we stepped on the court, um, it was unbelievable, but it was game time, so we had to put our game faces on and, you know, not get carried away with that hype. And um, they're a great team and a big team, the best team in the world. And um, they beat us, but we've got, we gave everything that we got, and we enjoyed the moment. We soaked up every moment. It was, it was an absolute pleasure to go against them, play against them. Yeah, and then after um, the game with China, you had your best uh, individual game, the game against Canada, where you had 12 points. Um, just what about well, that game was was special for you, the Canada game? It was it was good because I feel I felt like maybe I was I was finding my rhythm. I, I finally got into a rhythm to where I was playing my game, catching and shooting, and um, the, the the shots were falling. My teammates were doing a good job finding me on open court in transition, and the coach just told me um, he told me. Be confident in your shot. Um, you know, we need that. We need you to knock them down. And I carried that with me, and my teammates trusted me with the ball, and I, I let it fly. And it was it was absolute pleasure to see it go in and to find my groove and to finally be excited and be into a game and, and knock down some shots. It felt you know, that's my game, and it felt good. <laughs> and, uh, it was, oh. But it was a good game for us as well, like on a team level. And um, just from watching the uh, you know the international feed that we got back here in the in the states, the Senegalese crowd that, that you guys had um, certainly was was very loud and passionate. How many people were generally at games there cheering for you guys? And what was it like to look up into the you know when you had a chance to to see uh, your fans who made the trip over from there to Rio uh, to see them in the crowd? It was it was huge. Um, every single time we stepped on the court, whether it was the first quarter or the last, they were cheering loud for us. Um, people from Senegal that live there in Brazil, people that travel there to see us and take part of the experience. And uh, people that live in Brazil, Brazilian people and like other supporters that was all rooting for us. Um, we fed off their energy every single night and we took advantage of it. It was an absolute joy to play for them. And every single time we were on the court or walking off after the losses, they kept cheering us on. And the next game, they would come back with the same energy like we didn't lose the game before. And that was that was absolutely amazing. And we thought that was so cool that they did that for us. We loved it, and we thanked them for that energy. And uh, as you being on this team, one of the uh, one of the younger players, what did the the veterans of the team who had maybe been through you know international play with much more experience than you had, what were they telling you as you were experiencing all of this stuff uh, for the first time, and how to how to soak it all in? Um, they just told me to be myself. Um, this was this was the biggest stage of my career so far, for sure. And I think um, from the team that went to the Olympics, only one of them had been there before. Um, so we all enjoyed it at the same time, but they were, like,
like you said, very well more experienced than I was. They told me to soak in the moment, and I, I took it in my part to just enjoy every single moment and know that thousands and millions of people and athletes around the world wanted to be there, but they didn't get the opportunity. So I just made sure I took advantage of every moment, soaked it all up, and know that some people get to, don't get to experience that. I get to experience maybe one time and just take advantage of the moment. And they told me to do that, just enjoy every single moment, which I did. And uh, when you guys were outside the company, were you able to get to other some of the other events or see other Rio or what other things did you guys do uh, while you were down there? Yeah, we got we got to see Usain Bolt running the two hundred meters final. That was that was pretty special. <laughs> um, Watch him win his third consecutive title on that, and it was an absolute pleasure to see him get into his element and you see that on TV all the time. Mm -hmm. It's actually beat and see him get in his groove and do everything that he does, being the same board and ultimately watch him run and win that race it was amazing. Um we got to see beach volleyball, a little bit of it and we watched Taekwondo and we also we watched other basketball teams, France, USA, Serbia, the other matches and the guys too. Um especially the men's national um, the men's USA national team. Got to watch Kevin Durant and Clay Thompson for the first time live, and I love, I love him when he plays. So it was absolutely, it was all around so great. I, I loved every single moment of it. And did you guys, uh, did you stay for the closing ceremonies? And if so, what was that uh, final ceremony like to be part of that? If you were part of it. Unfortunately, we didn't get to stay because um, we left on that Sunday. We left around three thirty p.m. There, and the mm -hmm. ceremony was later that night. Gotcha. We didn't. Get to stay. We very much wanted to be part of it and take. Um, take part of it and, and get to enjoy that as well. But we couldn't because we would have missed our flight. It was a long enough flight <laughs> to get back. But um, we saw, saw some parts of it on TV and it was very cool. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it can top the opening ceremony where all the athletes were there. I think mm -hmm. that was uh, the, this op this um, closing one also was cool, but the opening one because I was there was was cooler. <laughs> well, well, certainly I think that uh, being part of it certainly trumps the uh, – the uh, the closing ceremony there. Um, what is the what did the kind of uh, the coaches or the you know the organizing committee tell you about uh, what they hope for you uh, you know for twenty twenty and beyond if you hope to continue being part of the national team? Uh, we have talked about that. It's, it's it would be amazing to get back there. I'm sure by then we would have gained way more experience, and it's for sure that some of the players that were there will not be and it would be like another a different group and different players but um if i'm still here and i'm still around i would love to take part of that hopefully we win that um 2019 uh after basket to be able to qualify mm -hmm. for 2020 that's something we're going to work on so but it's going to be step by step now we got to focus and concentrate on the next after basket 2017 and after that maybe the, the world cup 2018 we will take part of it if we win so right now we're focusing on that but it would be amazing to go to tokyo 2020 Hopefully we would make it, and you guys will see me there if we do. Well, if you if you make it, and I'm still with the GAC, I have my ticket to go and uh, justify going to Tokyo to to cover you guys out there, as opposed to just watching back here from television. So we will certainly be rooting for you to uh, be part of the national team um, going forward in the in the 2020. Uh, last thing here, like I said, is we uh, followed your exploits uh, there in Rio. The uh, the Southern Nazarene community and the GAC community was very. Uh, uh, keenly involved in making sure that they caught your games. Um, did you sense that? And what would you like to say to the fans back here uh, in the States uh, as they watched you uh, perform there in Rio? Yeah, I definitely felt it. Um, from the time they heard I was going, like my coaches from, from where I was in Southern Nazarene reached out to me. They kept encouraging me and my professional journey and everything. And as soon as I got to Rio, I received... Um, a tremendous amount of love throughout the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everybody. It's a new, um, their pages from all around um, social media and the GAC as well. When I saw you guys tweeting me, uh, talking about former SNU player, that was like an absolute pleasure. I was like, oh my gosh, they're tweeting about me. So that was, that was pretty cool. Thank you so much for following me through the journey. And thank you for supporting throughout the, throughout the whole um, Olympic experience with me and willing to do this interview with me and um, thinking about me for doing this interview with you guys. Thank you to SNU for the opportunity of four years playing there. It's been an absolute joy. I miss it every single night. And I hope they do well this season. Um, I'm rooting for them. I'm following around and they know that. And um, I hope you guys, the guy, 
um, the whole conference. It would be an absolute um, season and a joy for you guys to work with them. And I'll be following along with all of your pages. So thank you for having me. Thank you for the support and the love. <laughs> well, thank you, Omu, for joining us there from Senegal. We see the jersey there uh, from yep. the Olympics there. Uh, we appreciate you joining us here. We'll be following you uh, as you continue uh, on the international stage. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.